Magandang araw sa lahat. Good day everyone. I hope you are doing well. Today, we have a new topic to discuss. After discussing freedom as the foundation of morality. Now, let us discuss about the moral agent who is the bearer of that freedom. And in particular, we shall be discussing about culture and its role to moral behavior. No human being can survive on its own. Humans by nature are social beings. They live and co-live or coexist with other human beings and even with other non-human beings. Each one has a throneness. And when we say throneness, it means that a person is put in a certain situation which he or she never chose. No person chose to be born. No person chose his or her family. No family chose his neighbors. And nobody chose the environment he or she is in. His or her being is a product of his or her thrownness. Hence, in this lesson, we shall understand how culture influences human behavior. Our objectives for this lesson is to articulate what culture means and how it influences moral behavior, to recognize the differences in different cultures, to appreciate, appreciate such differences, to evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of cultural relativism, and to critique Filipino values. What is culture? We can define culture as the totality of learned and socially transmitted behavior. It means that everything that one can learn from his environment, from the society where he or she is in, that would include the language, the norms, the values, beliefs, and many more. All of this form a people's way of life. And so we can say that Culture is the people's way of life. And there are kinds of culture. There are two. First is material culture. From the word material. Tangible or physical things. For example, clothing, food, tools, and others. In Kalinga, for example, we have the bahag. We have the bongor. Spears and so on. So these are examples of mat material culture, materials which are part of our culture. Non-material, those which cannot be seen. Non-physical, for example, ideas, because they are intangible. For example, social roles, rules, ethics, and beliefs. Our belief in kabunyan is an example. Hindi naman natin nakikita yan. Our belief on or our kalinga core values, the paniyaw ngilin bain, that could fall under ethics. Hindi naman nakikita yan. Pero pinaniniwalaan natin at ginagawa natin. So these are the two kinds of culture. We also have the elements of culture. First, language. Of course, we know what language is. It is a group of words or ideas with common meaning and is shared to social group or situation. So, ito yung ginagamit natin para magkaintindihan. Kaya sinasabi na it is a vehicle through which we can carry out our complex social activities. Ito yung daan, ito yung paraan para magkaintindihan para magawa yung dapat natin gawin sa ating lipunan. That is why it is considered as the foundation of culture because without which we cannot move, we cannot survive, we cannot do anything. We have no social life and always remember that human beings are social. They cannot survive on their own. So, ganun kahalaga ang wika. 
So, ang wika ay bahagi ng kultura. That's why we have different languages because we belong to different cultures. Symbols. Symbol is anything that is used to stand for something else. Of course, symbols do not uh, represent themselves, but they represent something else. Creating object, gesture, sound, or image. Bowing, for example, is a symbol for respect. Sound. Sound of a gong. Usually, my celebration. Object. Having beads, for example. Bangor. If you have a lot of beads, if you have a lot of uh, gusi, it means something. Social status in the society. May kaya. So, yan ang halimbawa ng symbol. The symbols are part of our culture. Norms. Norms are rules or guidelines for behavioral purposes. So, ito yung mga dapat at hindi dapat gawin ng mga tao. At may dalawang, bahag, may dalawang uh, division ang norms. We have folk ways. Simple customary ways of people. So, ito yung mga ordinaryong ginagawa ng mga tao sa kanilang buhay araw-araw. Kaya meron na siyang pattern. Ibig sabihin, kapag hindi mo nagawa o kapag may nagawa ka, it, it has no serious uh, injury, it has no serious effect, it, it, it has no serious uh, consequence. Halimbawa, pagligo. Kung hindi ka naman naligo, wala namang punishment, wala namang consequence na malala. Some cultures might not take a bath every day. Pero okay lang, kultura nila yun. Some others, twice a day. It's okay, it's their culture. That is one of their folk ways. And Maurice, Maurice are the ought to be done and ought not to be done. So, they have serious consequences. Yung mga dapat at hindi dapat gawin. So, dapat hindi ka magnakaw ng pananim ng iba. Diba? Do not harvest the fruit of their labor. It is not yours. Sila ang nagtanim, ikaw ang mamimitas. Huwag ganun. Nangutang ka. Anong dapat mong gawin? Siyempre, bayaran. So, kapag nangunguha ka ng hindi sa'yo, siyempre, may consequence yan. Kapag hindi ka nagbabayad ng utang mo, may consequence mo ngayon. So, they are serious compared to talk uh, So, these are the two kinds of norms or divisions of norms. Then, values. Anything getting importance in our daily life becomes our values. Yung mga pinapahalagahan natin sa ating buhay ay nagiging bahagi ng ating values. Of course, it is not biological. Hindi naman nadadaan sa ano yan, sa heredity na kapag mabait ang tatay o kung ano yung values ng tatay o nanay ay ganun din sa bata. It is a social production or napapag-aralan sa uh, lipunan. Values are the good ideas and thinking of a person. For example, the values of honesty, values of generosity, of kindness, of care. So, halimbawa ng ating uh, kultura yan. Bahagi ng ating kultura. Especially, care for the elderly. Respect for the elders. 
and so on. Coarse beliefs, yung ating mga paniniwala. Our beliefs are responsible for our spiritual fulfillment. In our case here in Kalinga, we believe on the existence, guidance of Kabunyan. Because we believe that we are not just material beings but also spiritual beings and so we need to fulfill the needs of our spiritual body or spiritual need. Then taboos, beliefs of a society about certain actions that in general we feel extremely uncomfortable doing such. For example, talking about sex in the family. For most societies, it is a taboo. We are not comfortable talking about it in our or in the family. Kaya hindi pinag-uusapan. That is an example of a taboo. Laws, so siyempre mga batas. Written and enforced rules that guide behavior. So this is formal compared to the norms. So mayroon mga dapat at hindi dapat gawin. Pag mga ganito na, may mga kaukol uh, lang um, punishment. Pag hindi mo sinunod yung dapat mong gawin. Tulad nga yung pandemic. ECQ, bawal lumabas kapag hindi mahalaga. Bawal lumabas ang mga minors. Bawal lumabas ang mga senior citizens. Otherwise, pwede kang makulong. So, these are the seven elements of culture. Then, let's proceed with cultural relativism. What is cultural relativism? It is a belief that every culture is equal. So, walang superior, walang inferior. Walang mas mataas, walang nakakalamang. Pare-pareho lamang. And in that case, there is no universal standards. There is no absolute truth. So, we have no standards. There is no standard for everyone to judge whether something is good or bad, right or wrong. What is true to a certain culture might not be true to another culture. What is wrong in a culture might not be wrong to another one. So that is cultural relativism. Everything is relative from culture to culture. We have its strengths and weaknesses. First is, it promotes equality among cultures. So yun ang unang kagandahan ng paniniwalang ito. That all cultures are equal. Pare-pareho. Kaya walang tinitingala, walang inaapakan. Kasi pare-pareho ang paningin. Pantay-pantay. And that's good. And it follows respect. May galang sa isa't isa kasi pantay-pantay naman. Walang nakalalaman. Your culture is as good as mine. You are not superior and I am not inferior. It also preserves human cultures. So, there is no desire for other cultures to influence others. Same thing, others do not desire to adopt other cultures. Kasi magkapareho. I mean, they are equal. We are all equal. What is yours is yours. Mine is mine. There is no domination of some culture. So there is no dominant culture. It promotes appreciation to one's culture. And so with that, you appreciate your own culture. Hindi ka na maghahanap ng mas maganda pa, mas mabuti pang kultura. Kasi yung inyo ay yun na ang perfecto. That's the best that you have. Others might not be good for you. Kasi nga, iba sila. But it is the best for them. And with that, because there's no comparison, there's no competition, it promotes cooperation and collaboration. Nag- magtutulungan. You do what you can, I'll do what I can in my own capacity, according to m- my culture. So that is what is good in cultural relativism. 
course, if it has strengths, it has also weaknesses. So, ano naman yung hindi mabuti o ano naman yung uh, hindi ka nais-nais sa cultural relativism. First, right and wrong is relative. No standard basis to say an act is right and wrong. So, walang basihan para sabihin na yung ibang kultura ay mali o tama yung ginagawa nila. Because right and wrong is relative. It depends on the judgment of every culture. Kaya it follows, nobody can criticize the not good or bad cultural practices of other cultures. If a culture practices human offering, kasi nga bahaga ng kanilang paniniwala, they have to offer living humans. Nobody can criticize that outside their culture. Because for them, that's what is good. Yan ang mabuti para sa kanila. That is right. Pwede natin, pwede natin sabihin na mali, masama, pero wala tayong karapatan. Next, it promotes individualism. Kanya-kanya. Anong pakialam natin sa kanila? Ba't natin sila pinapakialam? Eh, iba nga sila. Iba nga tayo. So, anong pakialam natin? Diba? Pag pinakialaman mo, sasabihan ka. Bakit? Ano pa kailan mo? You have no business because this is our culture. You have no right, you have no authority, you have no power to criticize us because you're outside our culture. So, individualism. Kanya-kanya. And so, perceptions become truths. There will be many truths. Napakaraming katotohanan. May kanya-kanyang katotohanan. What they perceive in their own culture is the truth same with us same with the others that we can please but by offering living beings for example yun ang katotohanan para sa kanila iba naman sa iba and so on and the greatest weakness I would say is it creates chaos kaguluhan ang pinaka mapigat na consequence na cultural relativism. Dahil walang pakialaman na. Kahit alam natin masama yung ginagawa nila, wala tayong magagawa. For example, cutting trees. Maybe for others, everything is a gift from God. Mga kahol, bigay, biyaya ng Diyos. Dapat gamit, gamitin. So, putol ng putol ng putol, pero hindi naman nagtatanim. Hindi naman pwedeng pakialaman ng iba. So what will happen? There will be erosion. There will be flash flood. It will also contribute to uh, climate change. Yung basura, tapon ng tapon, lalo na sa mga canals, sa mga ilog, sa mga tubig, sa napupunta sa iba. Walang pakialamanan. So magkakagulo ang mundo kasi pwede magkakasalungat ang ating paniniwala. There will be no unity. We cannot create an international community. Hindi dapat walang UN, walang United Nations, kung kanya-kanya lahat. So that is the weaknesses. These are the weaknesses of cultural relativism. Now, does culture influence one's moral behavior? Before we answer, may we have this a situation or example. One is a pure-blooded Kalinga and was raised in Kalinga. He speaks Kalinga. He loves to drink Baraco coffee. He chooses Mama. He loves to eat hot chilies like we know more. He dances tadok tadok. He is hospitable. He is generous. He is respectful. He is obedient and religious. Question. If one happened to be in another setting, in another location, in another place, would you think he will have a different way of life and moral behavior? And so we have Pedro in another setting, situation, who is a pure-blooded Ilocano and was raised in Ilocos region. He speaks Ilocano, he loves to drink coffee, green one with pandesal, he loves to eat dineng-deng, he dances balsa and dayang-dayang, he's respectful, 
is religious, is economical, or thrifty, and he is sweet? So our answer to the question is obvious. Pedro can be Juan. Juan can be Pedro. They can interchange. Pwede si Juan ang nasa kalagayan ni Pedro o si Pedro ang nasa kalagayan ni Juan. Pero balikan natin yung pinakatanong. Does culture influence one's moral behavior? So let us analyze the situation. Why does one do things the way he does? And so with Pedro, it's obvious because of culture. He speaks that language because that is part of his culture. He drinks Barako because it is part of his culture. Choose Mama and so on. Now, same with Pedro. Hindi naman siya sanay sa Barako, kaya three in one. May pandesal. Hindi naman siya, siya sanay sa binongor o wala namang binongor sa kanila. Kaya dinengdeng. Tad, walang tadek. It's false or dayang day. Clearly, the answer is obvious. Now, let's go with the moral behavior. One is hospitable. Because the culture of Kalingas, they are hospitable. They can, they will offer everything that they have just to satisfy, just to show how hospitable they are to their uh, visitors. Ganon sila ka-hospitable. Kaya nag na yung manok nila na ayaw nilang katayi para sa kanila. Kakatayin nila yan para sa bisita. Yung mga nakatagong gamit mga nakatagong unan, kumot, na hindi nila ginagamit, ay nakalaan para sa kanilang mga bisita. That's how hospitable they are. And they give not because they have much. It's just that it is part of their culture to give. Respectful. So then, they do not use the word po and opo, but they are respectful, especially to their elders. They're obedient. Nakikinig ang mga yan. And of course, religious. Not because they are uh, they are regular, they are regularly attending masses, but because they believe on the existence of their Creator, that is the origin of everything. And so, same with Pedro. Why is he respectful to pagmamano? It's part of the culture. Religious, palagi nagsisimba. Economical or thrifty. So it's part of the culture. Sweet, because it is part of the culture. So, they behave according to their culture. Culture shapes the individual's being or personhood. This can be seen on his or her language, values, behavior, beliefs, and the overall manner of conducting himself or herself towards others and even to himself or herself. Ethical standards are based on societal standards because it is culture which is responsible in setting standards. Whenever Juan or Pedro encounters moral dilemmas, they turn into the respective cultural standards to resolve the same. The standard of right and wrong, good and evil are dictated by culture. It is then inescapable to conclude that culture influences one's moral behavior. But a question might arise, if culture influences one's moral behavior, and we have different cultures, does it mean that we have different moral standards? Indeed, due to cultural relativism, some believe that there is no objective morality. But the existence of cultural relativism does not necessarily negate the existence of objective morality, or the existence of objective morality denies the, the reality of moral relativism. It is the fact that there is cultural relativism, but, it, but does it negate the existence of objective morality? The answer is no. Morality is objective. Objectively, there are good and bad actions. For example, murder, rape, robbery, cheating, stealing, and the like. They are in themselves bad. 
no culture would judge these actions. That's good. While respect, honesty, generosity, kindness, and the like are in themselves good acts. And on the same manner, no culture, no rational culture would judge this the opposite way. So here, we can clearly see that there is objective morality. No matter how cultures of the world differ from each other, they all agree that there are good and bad acts. Let us now understand Filipino moral behavior. So this is a result of a study conducted in 1992. So we have the strength and the weaknesses of Filipino character. So we shall discuss first the strengths. First is pagkikipagkapwa. The Filipinos are very socially oriented people. We can actually claim that Filipinos are the most social beings in the planet. Sobra ang pagkikipagkapwa tao ng mga Pinoy. This value is expressed in pakikiramay. Ang daming pinagba- pinagdadaanan sa ating bansa, sa ating bayan, sa ating lugar at hindi natin pinababayaan ng isa't isa. We see to it that we extend help. We see to it that we give what we can. Nakikiramay tayo sa mga uh, nasasalanta, sa mga nakakasakit, sa mga nasa preso, and so on. So, we have this sense of belongingness to each other. We reach out as if we cannot live without the other. And actually, this pagkikipagkapwa-tao is one of the core values of the Filipinos yung kapwa tao the other is a part of me of you everyone is a part of me we are part of each other kaya ganun kahalaga ang iba sa atin as if we cannot live without the other or the others kaya kapag namatayan ka magtaka ka kung Walang taong darating, walang taong bibisita, walang taong makikiraman. Filipinos by nature, dagsa ang mga tao niya. Mga social gatherings, birthday, kasal, binyag, and so on. It is not so much on the food that, that they're going to eat. Hindi dahil gusto nilang makikain. Hindi dahil gusto nilang maki... Uh, to be part of the celebration, to be part of the gathering as an expression of uh, their oneness with you in celebration with what you are celebrating. Kung kasiyahan, pati masaya. Pero kung sa kalungkutan, ganun din. Nakikiraman. Nakikiraman. And that is a very good trait of Filipinos. Next, family orientation. Filipinos are family oriented. There might be some exceptions, but generally, Filipinos are family oriented. That's why we have extended families. We love so much our families that even some parents do not like their children to go away. Lumayo sa kanila kahit may asawa na, kahit may anak na, gusto nila sa kanilang puder pa rin sila nakatira. Ganun natin kamahal ang ating pamilya. Joy and humor. Sa hirap at linhawa, masaya ang Pilipino. We still find time to be joyous, to be humorous, to matawa tayo kahit mahirap ang buhay. And so, we really believe that laughter is the best medicine. But if, it, but if you keep on laughing, you need medicine. Flexibility, adaptability, and creativity. Filipinos are very flexible, adaptable, and creative. That is why there are many Filipinos abroad, because they are able to adapt with the culture. And so they survive. They are flexible. They find ways to do things. They find ways to make things possible. They are very creative. Nagagawa nila ng paraan. Kaya hindi nahihirapan ang Pinoy na maka-adapt sa ibang bansa o manirahan sa ibang bansa, magtrabaho sa ibang bansa. That is why uh, 
many foreigners love Filipinos also. Sa kaya ng Pinoy. Hard work and industry. Sa mga trabahadoras abroad, gusto mo nila ang mga Pinoy kasi they are industrious. They are hard working. Faith and religiosity. Regardless whether we were uh, colonized or we were influenced by Western beliefs or faith, Filipinos by nature are religious. Tulad nga natin, sa Kalinga, kahit Kristiano tayo, o kahit ano pa man ang religion natin, we still believe on kabunyan. That's how religious we are. We always put our trust in God. We always have faith in God, no matter what happens. We always believe that everything that happens, everything that is happening, is in accordance with God's will. So, ipinagpapasa Diyos natin. Ability to survive. So, kahit napakaraming sako na ang ating pinagdadaanan, Filipinos are resilient. And so, they can survive. Napakaraming nadaanan na hirap sa buhay, pero nakakaya pa din. So, that's how courageous Filipinos are. These are the strengths of Filipino character. And of course, an expression of their moral behavior. And we have the weaknesses. First is extreme personalism. Yung masyadong makasarili. Kaya nga uso ang corruption kasi makasarili. Hindi iniisip yung ibang tao. Hindi iniisip yung para sa iba. Iniisip lang yung para sa sarili. It is not good to be makasarili. Because at the end, you cannot survive on your own. Extreme family-centeredness. Sobrang pagmamahal naman sa pamilya. Kaya, may mga konsentidor na parents, mga kapatid, mga lolo-lola, may mga spoiled brat. Ayan, extreme family-centeredness. It is not bad to love our families, but if it's too much, it is not love anymore. Hindi na yung pagmamahal. Lack of discipline. So, kulang sa disiplina. Especially sa mga estudyante, this is uh, very evident. Halimbawa, ay yung mamaya na lang. Saka na lang. So, walang disiplina. Mamaya ko na lang gagawin yung assignment ko yung module ko, yung project ko, yung requirement ko. Bukas na lang ako maglalaga. So, walang disiplina. Hindi sumusunod sa mga batas. Bawal lumabas ang minor de edad. But we can see minors walking around the streets. Liquor ban. Pero maraming umiinom. So, that's how Filipinos are lacking in discipline. Passivity and lack of initiative. So there are Filipinos, there are many Filipinos who are passive. Halimbawa, inaas na lang sa gobyerno yung pinabukasan nila. Food, shelter, education, everything. Gobyerno na lang. Hindi na mag-e-effort. Hindi na mag-initiate para sa sariling inabukasan, para sa pamilya. Naghihintay lang. Tapos sisisihin ang gobyerno kapag walang nangyari sa buhay. Colonial mentality. Everything that is foreign is better. Yung mga locally produced, locally made, ay low standard, low quality. Even ideas. Mas pinaniniwalaan natin yung galing sa ibang bansa. Yung mga gamit natin, made in Japan, made in Korea, made in USA, mas gusto natin yun kesa yung sariling atin. So we always believe 
example, we feel better if we have foreign things, foreign ideas. Mas alam natin, mas gusto natin yung iba kaysa yung sarili natin. Kanya-kanya sindo. In contrast with extreme personalism, yung kanya-kanya syndrome is envy, ing- inggit naman ito. Proud mentality papasok dito. Instead na magtulungan, hilaan, pawaga. Sinainggit tayo sa taas. Gusto nating makyat sa taas at the expense of others. Bakit hindi natin uh, i-push yung nasa taas para sa ganun? Tayo naman ang kukunin sa taas. Pero iba, we want to pull down those who have those who are at the top yung mga nasa taas naman gusto rin nilang mas kapakal yung mga nasa baba so inggit inggit kanya kanya simple lack of self analysis and self reflect so maraming Pinoy ang ganito hindi pinibigyan halaga yung pag-iisip yung pag-intindi ng mga bagay-bagay analysis especially sa sarili There's, they do not give time for themselves to think, to reflect, to go back to the past, why things happen. Upang sa ganun, sana may iwasan yung mga dapat ng iwasan. Dapat gawin yung mga dapat gawin. In short, we do not learn from our mistakes because we do not reflect. And so we are not becoming better. So these are the weaknesses. These are challenges that should push us, motivate us to become better if we have these weaknesses in us. So we have to nurture, we have to enhance yung strength natin. At yung mga weaknesses natin, unti-unti nating tanggalin. At sana unti-unti mawala. That's it for today. Have a good day and thank you for listening.